Hello, Libra. Welcome to your weekly reading for May 20th to the 26th. This is for Libra and Libra Rising, and you know we're going to jump right into it. Libra, this is a huge week. Your life is changing, and you will see that everything is starting to improve for you this week in a major way major way you see everything underlined we're moving into gemini season we have jupiter and venus moving into gemini that's your bff fellow air sign you are definitely going to feel these energies really really nicely it really is going to uh you know affect you know the fire and air signs the most but uh you're already going through major changes and the reason why I say this is going to be really impactful for you and even life changing is because you've been, you've had a lot of planets in your eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth. The eighth house can be a little intense. Y'all have been going through some wild times, you know, at the same time, Saturn moved into Pisces last year uh, or recently. And it, uh, when did it, you know, many, many, many months now, uh, you know, we're kind of like in the middle of it. Saturn in Pisces is in your sixth house, okay? And that's everyday activities. So, yeah, have Libras been going through it with the South Node in your sign too? Have you been going through changes? Absolutely. But now you're going to start seeing everything that you've worked hard for starting to pay off. You're going to see a lot of, you know, spiritual movement as well. Really, really being in a place where uh, you just feel very, very in tune with your intuition, uh, your higher self, all of that great stuff. And, you know, these changes that have been happening for you, uh, really big changes. In fact, you can trace it back to the new moon total uh, solar eclipse that we had in Aries, uh, you know, last month we had, you know, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that I've said is still like this thread that you're still going to feel. Okay. You're still going to feel now. We even had that new moon in Taurus. That was really big for you. Okay. That was just, you know, two weeks ago, lots happening for you, lots happening for you. A uh, lot of new beginnings. Okay. Now, uh, you see, see that this week, by the way, uh, we not only have all these shifts into Gemini, but in the asterisk, Venus conjuncting Jupiter. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, we'll talk about this. We also have a full moon in Sagittarius. That's going to be really nice for you. I absolutely love that. It blends well with your sign. But let's kick it off on Monday. We officially move into Gemini season. So this is going to be for the next four weeks. And you are going to start feeling this. You are going to start feeling this. You're going to start feeling very social. You're going to feel very social. You may even travel. You may be traveling with friends. You may have, uh, you know, even uh, opening the doors to your neighbors, having some, you know, really nice bonding time with neighbors as well. But uh, Sun and Gemini for you, Libra, very, very social. It is your ninth house, so it is spirituality. So you may feel a lot of that, you know, just even development in terms of, you know, the way that you see things, your philosophies, you can feel a lot of growth there. Okay. Jupiter does expand. All right. And so it's also uh, a time where uh, it's if you are uh, possibly thinking about writing a book, that could be a thing, uh, doing something in terms of broadcasting as well. But travel definitely will be a really big thing for you. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're planning trips or maybe thinking about doing some travel. Could even be some short distance travel. But you are definitely going to be a lot more curious about things and trying new things now. Okay, so I really love this for you. It is definitely going to be a very social time for you. And you are already a very social sign. Now, on Wednesday, we have the sun trining Pluto. So let me just tell you how big this is. Sun trining Pluto. Listen, romance has been a big thing for a lot of y'all, okay? Uh, and even career. Now, uh, sun trining Pluto, this is major. This is major. First, sun is in Gemini at this point, and Pluto is in Aquarius. Two air signs. You complete that, Libra. You're the third air sign, so you really complete this, uh, what's happening on this day, and you will feel it throughout the uh, weeks, okay? Because there's a series of Pluto trines that are happening, and trines are ridiculously extraordinarily auspicious they are amazing okay so this is an amazing day a lot of mental stimulation uh and by the way remember pluto did move into aquarius this year for the first time in 250 years this is with the sun moving into gemini the first time that we've had this aspect in 250 years sun in gemini pluto in aquarius this is going to be major pluto in aquarius by the way your fifth house love relationships 
joy, pleasure, family, children, creativity, self-expression, procreation. A lot of y'all could be thinking about having babies, having children. This could be a really big thing for you now because also remember Mars is still currently in Aries with your North Node in your seventh house of partnerships. And, you know, again, that can be career. That can be career. Remember, this is, uh, uh, it works both ways, whatever resonates with you. But this is a day, Pluto is all about empowerment. So I want you to feel that. I want you to feel really empowered. It's almost like I don't even have to tell you that there is that just you're going to feel that burst of that especially with authorities like if you've been if you need to ask for something like a raise or a promotion or something that you really want you feel really empowered around like this is the time this is the time i really love this for you you could also feel really compelled to go deep really deep even on a psychological level uh in terms of like unrooting things feeling that empowerment letting it shine you know remember uh with with there's still planets in uh uh, uh taurus in your eighth house right it's everything's going to be leaving your eighth house soon uh starting this week and eighth house has that intensity to it so you could just be really really uh going really deep but remember eighth house is also intimacy so yeah is there something around like uh you know possible like romance here yes absolutely is there something about money here yes absolutely don't forget pluto is the native ruler of the eighth house okay so this is de 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 definitely going to be a big thing but also again like travel publishing learning things higher education is a big thing for you now okay uh so it really is just a day of empowerment just think of like um superman or or supergirl uh breaking free from uh, from chains of kryptonite that's how this day is going to feel and i really want you to actually use it all right please use this to your advantage it's really strong energy now you see we get to thursday and thursday is very loaded now the orb of degree for it, this full moon in sagittarius by the way if you saw my monthly forecast or even your annual forecast you know this is my favorite full moon of the year this is the best full moon of the year this is a jupiter ruled full moon this is one that is just if, like all the planets are harmonious this is just really 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 nice um and so just know that libra this is definitely going to be a big time for you uh in terms of communication in terms of something like researching writing projects even could be a thing for you around this time uh maybe signing contracts around this time now this full moon again uh you know, when I was talking about the orb of degree, you could definitely feel the effects of this full moon a few days before, a few days after, uh, really strongly, okay? It is a powerful full moon. Uh, and it really is, you know, full moons bring closure, culmination. I want you to see the other side of it with every ending, right? There's a new beginning. So look at all the other aspects that are happening this day. There are new things happening for you around this time. So have that shift on what's new for you, what is going to be uh, 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 blossoming for you around this time. This full moon in Sagittarius is your third house. So again, something communication related, writing related, could be something with siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, even travel. There really could be a, a, a time that you're traveling uh, right now, especially with the sun in Gemini, and you see the other two planets moving into Gemini soon as well. That is a uh, uh, third house activity, but this full moon in Sagittarius uh, rules your third house. So you see that overlap there. Uh, so absolutely 1000% uh, love this. A lot of, exp there definitely could be a turning point for you around this time. Uh, so uh, in terms of you feeling free to Sagittarius, is like freedom and authenticity and uh, even just like that adventurous spirit coming out. Now, you see that Venus is moving into Gemini on the same day. So now we have the sun in Gemini with Venus in Gemini. Venus in Gemini is a very, it's like a mental connection, okay? Really craving that mental connection. So you could really, really uh, seek that now, all right? So again, like really social time for you, really opening up. I really absolutely love this. And you're gonna, Venus is gonna be here in Gemini for, for for a few weeks. So you will definitely feel it. Uh, remember, Venus is your ruling planet. Love, relationships, money matters as well. Beauty, creativity, a lot of great stuff happening here. Now, the big, the big aspect, Venus conjuncting Jupiter, arguably the second best day of the entire year, coming after the best day of the year last week. So, wow, what a week. What a week. And you are definitely going to feel this. Now, this is what's interesting. Venus conjuncting Jupiter, the two benefic planets leaving you 
this beautiful, wonderful gift, okay? It's something that's, you know, they're getting together. They're saying, what can we do for Libra to make their life better? Don't forget Venus is, uh, you know, your ruling planet, but also uh, it is, you know, the ruling planet for Taurus too. So y'all share that. Now, this is what's interesting. Venus conjuncting Jupiter is still happening in Taurus because it's at 29 degrees. There are 30 degrees, 29 degrees is a critical point. Really interesting before Venus moves into Gemini. And so when I say it's leaving you, these two planets are leaving you this parting gift in Taurus. Oh my goodness. Yes. This is in addition to the one they left you uh, during the new moon in Taurus. So there could be something here with money there. You remember this is happening in your eighth house, eighth house is shared resources, inheritance, investments, bonuses, commissions, uh, paying off debts, loans, things like that. There's, there's, there's something here, but eighth house is also remember I said intimacy, but it's death and rebirth. It's this new cycle that you're moving into. It is so so nice, okay? And Venus conjuncting uh, Jupiter uh, in Taurus, that has, it's been 12 years. It's been 12 years. So another uh, rare aspect that's happening here. Now, uh, you definitely will feel this like rush of energy around this time. All these feel-good aspects, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're going to do the Pulp Fiction dance for sure. You definitely will on this day because you see Venus and Jupiter are also going to be sexiling Neptune. How amazing is that? This is compassion to a whole other level okay and passion as well i mean this is venus and jupiter all right conjuncting neptune which is all about uh you know compassion imagination dreams pay attention to your dreams you know neptune uh is also uh you know spirituality you'll really feel that now i mean this is very you know uh creative energy if you're an artist of any type you will definitely feel that burst here of of, of just creativity uh, it's going to be really nice jupiter sexiling neptune alone it's so much like good fortune and harmony and faith. Don't forget uh, Jupiter is faith. All right. And Neptune with that spirituality. This is like true. Like, it, like if this, if Jupiter sexiling Neptune had a child, it would be manifestation. Okay. This is definitely like a really, really, really special, very optimistic aspect, but you know, Venus is there to really enhancing it. I absolutely love this. And then on Saturday, the big, big aspect of Jupiter moving into Gemini. Now, this is the first time uh, an outer planet has moved signs this year. All right. So this is a big deal. Now, Jupiter has not been in Gemini for 12 years. This is a 12 year cycle. So it's almost as if Taurus is passing the baton of the good fortune, good luck, prosperity, expansion, belief, wisdom, profit, all that goodness, all that good stuff to Gemini. All right. And again, that is just so nice with your sign. You will definitely feel these energies. It, they're definitely amplified here with the sun and Venus here as well. During the same week, they're all moving together like this little party, like this. Yeah, let's do it like this uh, squad. Uh, but I really love this for you. This is just really nice because remember, Gemini rules are ninth house. So again, a lot of that just uh, spirituality that really like you're seeing things in this big way. Your world is expanding. OK, you are definitely going to be a lot more social throughout the year because Jupiter and Gemini, not even the year until next year. This is happening for one calendar year. Jupiter will be in Gemini for for an entire year till June 2025 in your ninth house. Okay, so major. This is absolutely major. You're definitely going to, uh, you know, uh, possibly thinking about or doing some long distance travel that is part of the ninth house. Again, you have all this luck right now in terms of publishing, writing a book, starting a website, things like that. Like this is big. This is really big. Broadcasting too. You can start your own YouTube channel. There's so many possibilities here, but again, education, there's likely something you may want to learn more, go back to school for things like that, uh, could be possible here, but just definitely know that everything is going to stop, uh, not only expand for you, but you are just going to be a lot more mentally stimulated. And again, a very social Jupiter and Gemini is very social. It's very social but having you know things expand through your connections right so i really really love this and again curiosity really is a big thing here so really again learning new things could be really really big for you because gemini is a native ruler of of of, of the third house right and so uh in it, it just it's in your ninth house so it overlaps the two travel houses 
is, you know, so this is a very Mercury ruled, it's it's Mercury ruled, right? Uh, because Mercury is Gemini's ruling planet. So again, you could definitely do a lot of travel this year is what I'm trying to say. And we'll obviously talk more about it throughout, uh, you know, the year, but uh, very, very uh, uh, open-minded is, is Jupiter and, and Gemini. And that's part of this curiosity and trying new things. But communication is also a big thing here. Okay, so you could be communicating in a lot of different ways, a lot of different ways that maybe you've never done before, uh, really expanding the way that you communicate, uh, really even like in order to like make things make sense for you, communicating on like so many different levels, uh, but also like experimenting and exploring new ways of communication as well, whether in person, whether through Zoom, whether through DMs or whatnot, just know that there is going to be this expansion of that, okay? Just think of like uh, Amy Adams in Arrival, right? Or maybe, anyway, so well, so you get it, communicating. Uh, so now, you see on the same day, Venus trines Pluto, so our second trine, Pluto trine of the week. This is how powerful this week is going to be. This is a major shift. This cannot be, under, like, if the, like, uh, this is major, okay? I, I'm just letting you know, this is absolutely major. Venus trining Pluto, wow, wow so much sexual energy with Venus training Pluto and remember Venus is already sex it's all you know it's a ruling planet it's it's it's, it's love and romance and relationships and sex and then Pluto in Aquarius again in your fifth house of sex so there is that overlap there if you're here for that okay romance intimacy that could be a thing but Venus training Pluto is also money it's also money. All right. So keep that in mind. This could be a day where even like uh, if you're not here for either of those, it's just your passions. Your passions heighten to a whole other level. That is a, a, a truly big thing here. Um, so let's get started. Just you see that there's so much happening here. So much happening here. And it all leads into, you know, we have the sun trining Pluto, Venus trining Pluto. Um, and then later on, you know, in June, we'll have Jupiter trining Pluto. I mean, this is really, really big, really, really big. So there's all these different threads that are actually happening right now. Uh, so anyway, Libra, let's get to it. Let's see what's going on for you for um, May 20th to the 26th, again, for Libra and Libra rising. And, you know, this is that one time of year when I say, Definitely read for your rising sign if you're not, because you will feel most of everything that I've just said in your rising. Um, and uh, I did a video on the main page of my channel that you can watch if you know if you don't know your rising, don't know how to get your rising. All that information is there. But the one thing that I say is like, why wouldn't you want to re read your rising? Because you don't you want to see where you're also going to get like luck in another area of your life, like. Look at your rising as well. I mean, the big three, right? Uh, sun, moon, rising. Okay, but you're welcome to read any, whatever you want. If you want more clarity or insight in those areas of your life, like your sun, rising, moon, Venus. But let's get to it, Libra. Let's see what's going on for you for this week. May 20th to the 26th. Again, for Libra, Libra rising, Libra moon, Libra. What? what who? What, you, you, you get where I'm going with this. May 20th. 26. All right, Libra, let's do it. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I do a traditional cult across spread really does offer the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, we will, you know, we will Libra. You're amazing. How are you doing? Libra, what's going on with you? Tell I, you know, I love you. Do you like my, uh, you know, Venus is still in Taurus for the first half of the week. And, uh, uh, it's beauty, it's spa, it's things like that. I got my Venus and Taurus haircut. Let's get started. Venus, <laughs> Venus, <laughs> Libra. Um, yeah, you are definitely really, really good. There's something you got to get over, but, uh, and it's very interesting because the continuation, think about your reading last week. Okay. Really think about your lead or look back to your reading last week. You see that it's, it, it, there's that progression here, but you're going to be absolutely fine. All right. You're going to be great. You're, you're really good. You got the moon in your past. Okay. Very interesting here. All right. So yeah, you've been going through it. You've possibly been in your head about a lot of things emotionally too. There could have been some, you know, really big emotional moments. You could have had some, uh, 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 just again, having these moments of having to face a lot of the fears. And I'm not surprised with all those Uranus conjunctions that were happening last week, uh, all that activity in Taurus. Remember, this is a huge buildup of planets that were in your eighth house. So it could have been like really intense for you, but it's part of your inner transformation. Don't forget that with Pluto retrograde and uh, uh, Aquarius as well. Uh, yeah, that's also like really going deep, really digging 
digging deep to figure out, you know, what uh, fears that you have to face, something about you that you're like, okay, I no longer want to like be this way, act this way, think this way. I'm moving past this now. And so good for you. I really love that for you. So uh, the moon came up in your past. So again, uh, I know I dropped these readings a little bit earlier than the actual week. So if you haven't yet, have those moments to really have that, you know, uh, uh, clarity to and, you know, really trusting your intuition, letting your intuition guide you into anything that you're moving into this week. And when you do, oh, my goodness, you got the Knight of Swords. Uh, boom, boom, boom. You got the Knight of Swords in the heart of your spread. This is a big deal, okay? A very big deal because uh, swords are the mental suit, right? It's the air suit. It's, you know, logic, thinking, uh, even communication as well. And you are just ready. You are ready. You are in this mindset, this headspace. You're just, let's do it. I no longer fear things. I, I, I'm i actively pursuing the things that I want. Nothing's going to stop me. Now there's part of this, tra it's part of your transformation. You know, what's really great about the Knight of Swords is, Knight of Swords is Gemini, by the way. And so remember, you've got the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter moving into Gemini in your ninth house of spirituality. The way that you see things, your, your, like I said, your philosophies, your belief systems, and all of that but it's just like there's that mental apt like uh, aptitude the, 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 you know what i'm saying like it's just you're 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 just it's finally you're moving forward in this way where uh, you're you have no fear okay it's this fearlessness it's just so nice coming after the moon okay so uh if you haven't yet have those moments again just to have that clarity and have that confidence moving forward okay just blazing forward you even see the fire under his feet come on just boom 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 this is bold courageous this is someone who you know he's literally moving into the storm okay that's how fearless he is okay fierce he's a, a fierce knight and knights are active okay so remember to take that action moving forward um and before i even get there you see you've got the king of swords in your crown too so that's why i'm like you're you're good you're absolutely good uh you did get the three of swords very interesting remember it was in your final outcome last time but that it was clarified and you you've got all these uh other cards but now it's in your challenge area so again it's that just you know moving forward from anything that could have been really hard for you but something that not only hard for you emotionally, but it made you overthink things, uh, overanalyze things could have been something really big. So it's just really now is the time to get move in this new headspace, okay? And you will feel that empowerment, especially with the King of Swords in your crown. Oh my goodness, like that is gonna be really nice. So identify those things that may have been like, you know, emotionally impactful, but you know, you have the Three of Swords in your challenge area this week. So there is still that, you know, uh, possibility that you could be holding on to something where you're just like i need to just let this go i need to snip cut cut it loose cut it loose because i'm ready to just go wild and move forward and and i have all these brilliant ideas brilliant thoughts and the brilliant plans i need to move forward with that so take that time this week okay and it seems like you're going to be fine because not only did you get the king of swords you also got the ten of cups i mean wow you got the king of swords in your crown so this is a king that is very powerful very tons i mean like speaking of empowerment this week Wow, you're thinking about it. You're fight. You're like solid in that area. This is a king who has faced all his truths. Okay, has nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. He's the only king that looks directly at you. Okay, so he is also very. You know, when I say empowerment here, right? This is power. This is true authority. This is someone who is not intimidated by anyone. Okay, so this is you. This is you ready to strike, ready to go after the things that you want. A lot of clarity, head above the clouds here. This is really, really nice. Again, all coming after the moon. So really, really nice. And, you know, the King of Swords is Aquarius. Okay, remember, Pluto is in Aquarius. And uh, we have these two Pluto trines this week. So pay attention to those days where you will feel this empowerment. Okay, this I can do anything. I am bulletproof. I am, you know, uh, Godzilla whatever it is you know i whatever you do now uh 
10 of cups. Come on. And the root of your spread. This is joy, happiness. This is, you know, uh, 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 complete enjoyment. All right. So there's this sense of, you know, this is happy everything. Okay. This is, you know, uh, uh, it seems like there is this part of one thing ending for you this week and a new something new beginning for you. Okay. Uh, but a lot of emotional fulfillment, also spiritual fulfillment that comes with this card, knowing that everything that you're doing now is is moving toward this direction of complete optimism. Everything's going my way. You see the only rainbow and tarot here indicating this promising future. This is just uh, wonderful. And then cups is that emo it's emotions, right? Emotions, love, relationships, family, children, everything that I said, it's already happening for you with Pluto and these trines in Aquarius, which is very nice. And then your spirituality with all these planets shifting to Gemini in your ninth house of spirituality. Uh, hello, you also got the chariot in your future. Boom, boom, boom. Like moving forward is an understatement here. This is like beyond light speed. All right. There's, I don't know if that's physically, is it physically possible? Astrophysically possible? Uh, but yeah, this is beyond because the chariot is just like, yeah, nothing's going to hold me back. I'm aware of the challenges I've been through. It's water off a, a, a chariot's back and I'm just moving forward now. I'm moving forward. I'm balancing all those dualities in my life. I've got the power and not only the power, the mind power, okay? Because look at the sphinxes, right? They're going opposite directions and he's not even holding on to any rain. So how is he actually controlling the sphinxes? Up here, okay? And all that willpower, that mind power, it comes from within. And remember, you already have the Knight of Swords and the King of Swords here. Okay, so wow. Wow. All right, and the Chariot really is like, again, that fearless energy, that confidence in terms of moving forward, learning, you know, it's it's like the journey that you've been on, you've learned a lot. And now you're using that and applying it to, you know, become this stronger person, this, you know, the best version of yourself I absolutely love this for you. I, I, uh, yeah, really, really big. And if you are here for career, yeah, that is a big thing. Okay. Because you could feel that momentum in terms of career as well. Okay. Because the chariot is cancer, uh, attributed to cancer. Cancer does rule your 10th house, right? So career, fame, public recognition, honors, achievements, social status. Let's get to your staff. Libra. Oh my goodness. Y'all. Um, if you like this reading, oh my God, Libra nation. Let me know. Let me know. Like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me what's going on. And you know, I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. And you're good. You're you're going to be sitting in that throne. You're good. Um, oh, it looks like actually there's someone. Um, there's someone that may regret having done something to you. Uh, you may have to have a conversation about that, that could be causing the three of swords, which by the way is a Libra card, right? So, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep that in mind, but you're going to be like you're pudding, you're pudding. I'm going to make that a word. You're pudding. I don't know. Is that even a word? Anyway, uh, six of swords. Wow. Wow. So remember king of swords, knight of swords and the chariot. And now you have the six of swords moving forward moving forward this is a huge transition you see where my finger is look how turbulent that water is okay now what's really great about this is look they're moving beyond it they're moving past it okay all this forward momentum moving into this better like again like this healthier mindset and just like seeing clearly now and 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 moving away from any troubles that have been causing them uh really really nice a lot of protection in this card a lot of security in this card i mean they are definitely like kayaking over to you know the maldives at this point like paradise you are definitely moving in that direction and i want you to keep moving in that direction this is really really great now you have the nine of swords okay but it's in your external factors area so it does seem like there is someone else involved here um where it's it doesn't feel like it is it feels like there is someone that may have done something to you where they're you know 
just like him sitting up at night, uh, maybe feeling bad about something that happened, maybe regretting something that happened. You just never know. That's why it's so important to communicate, especially when you have three planets in Gemini, the social planet, the planet of you know communication, which is a big thing. You have this full moon in Sagittarius in your third house of communication. I mean, really, really have those conversations instead of like uh, holding things in. If, if there is someone out there, you know, it's like clearing the deck. But, you know, if it is you, then it is still that, you know, again, putting being in that mindset of, of, of moving forward, of, of moving forward from anything that could have been taking up just too much headspace uh, where you may even be overanalyzing things. But, yeah, it is definitely someone else involved here. I'll even do a clarifier for you. Um, oh, yeah, you're mm, OK. You're good. Yeah, you. Yeah. So you just got the emperor. Um this is what's really interesting, okay? Remember the North Node and Mars still in Aries right now, okay? The Emperor is Aries, all right? And so Aries rules your seventh house, as you know, uh, big thing, really big thing. That's partnerships, that's relationships. So definitely someone else involved here, but it looks like it is someone else. But, you know, when you have that conversation, when you smooth things over, you know, not only do you work with your own karma, uh, you become the better person in the situation. You feel really good about it. It's no longer something that's in the back of your head and you've got all that empowerment. Now you hold the power. Now you hold the power. Okay. So really, really, you know, again, uh, even again, if it's you, Sometimes you have to be that person that, you know, uh, sometimes like uh, buries the hatchet, right? Even if you know that it's not your fault, it's just, again, being that better person. And I know that that's something that, you know, humans just do in general when they shouldn't be doing. Like, you know, when you, if someone bumps into you, you're the one that says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like it wasn't your fault, like that kind of thing. But sometimes if there's someone that you're dealing with where you know that you're more in a emotionally stable place than them or whatnot, sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and be that person. Now, I'm not saying that that's for like all Libras here. It re like could be you as well. But once you get out of that mindset, wow, you will feel empowered. Wow, you will have the power. This is power control. This is like ruler of his own destiny. This is that's how much power, okay? A lot of wisdom here. A lot of wisdom here. This driving life force, like really, really great. You also have the Queen of Pentacles. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, you want to be that person. You want to be that person taking care of other people. Uh, a lot of home energy that's coming up. A lot of like home stuff. Uh, it could be like significant other. It could be your uh, 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 family, children. You know, that's already happening for you with Pluto and Aquarius. But, um, you know, the Queen of Pentacles is a Capricorn card that does rule your fourth house. Uh, you may actually even feel that a little bit more like feeling that you like you want to like step up and have that like power of, of taking care of others uh you know the queen of pentacles has a maternal side but the fact that you know she is capricorn again representing your fourth house or domestic sector cardinal of uh, capricorn also being a cardinal sign that leadership quality just like you uh but i really love this because it's also building this world that you want to live in too comfortably all right so really continue to move forward you've got a lot of great things waiting for you you've got the king of cups as well and your final outcome i mean uh you want to have you want to see how crazy uh, like how much i love your reading is that um remember i showed you the turbulent water here that you're moving past now look in your final outcome look how turbulent turbulent that water is okay mm. you see that now, you see his throne literally on top of that turbulent water. Nothing is going to knock him off that throne. That's how emotionally stable he is. That's how comfortable he is. That's how much power he has. That's how much love he has to give as well. This is the King of Cups. He's got cups. Remember love. A lot of love here. A lot of love energy here. This is absolutely amazing. Really nice uh, for you to have uh king cups in your final outcome because it just seems like there's that stability that's coming through that remember you have the ten of cups in the root of your spread so uh as you move forward into this next you know chapter which a huge chapter with the shift into gemini season jupiter moving into gemini venus moving to gemini really really nice even that intuitive call you know the king of cups is the most intuitive king right um and remember i said all this gemini activity is in your ninth house of spirituality so yeah, I mean, like there's that great alignment there, but you're absolutely good. I mean, two kings, you got all these great swords like moving forward. You got the chariot in your future. 
you're definitely moving forward to toward the things that you want, but it's more like you're leaving the things that have been like holding you back and you're starting this new journey. I absolutely love that for you. Uh, so uh, Libra, thanks so much. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what's going on next week. We're clearly talk more about what's going on next week. And oh my gosh, my hand, my elbow is like sticking on like cards. I think that's my cue to go. I think that's my cue to go. Uh, Libra, y'all are amazing. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.